Hey everybody, it's Franklin, founder of Hollywood Screenwriters Academy, and welcome to this free training series. I'd like to congratulate you. I know it takes personal investment to be here, and I appreciate you giving me this opportunity. It means a lot to me. I started this process years ago. I knew nothing about story structure or character development, but I had a really great idea for a movie, so I sat down and I wrote a screenplay in less than 30 days. Sent away for a Writers Guild agent list, put together a query letter, and I packaged up my script. I mailed out as many as I could afford. Several weeks later, something funny happened. I came home from work and found a response from an agency in my mailbox. I ripped open that letter and I read how the script had no story structure, didn't follow proper formatting, and the spelling was terrible. They regretted to inform me that they were definitely not interested. I was horrified. It was the worst news I had ever received. For weeks, I could barely keep my head up. I wanted to crawl under a rock. I never breathed a word of this to anyone, not even my wife. I was just too embarrassed. Years later, I was cleaning out a garage for my mother, weeks after my father passed away, and I came across an old box of journals. My mother told me he was a great writer, but he just never pursued it. I decided on that day I was not going to let my dream be crushed by anything. I was going to do what I loved. So I just had to figure out how I was going to do that. The first thing I did was find out who was teaching what I needed to know. At the time, it was formatting, which was first on my list. I needed to know how to lay out a screenplay. And second, I needed to understand story structure. I spent hours in a bookstore. It was like a secret religion. Everyone had the same message. It was just, how was it being said? Then I came across Michael Haig's book, Writing Screenplays That Sell. I thumbed through the pages, and it was like the holy grail. I had to have an autographed copy, so I sent away for it. And when it came, I read it from cover to cover. I highlighted paragraphs, tab pages, but I still had questions. Was my main character too sympathetic? Was my second act long enough? So I did what any aspiring screenwriter would have done. I called Michael Haig. His phone number was in the back of the book, and it said, if anyone has questions, he'd love to hear from you. Well, I had questions. I finally got up enough nerve, and I dialed the number. The phone rang and rang, and then something funny happened. Michael actually picked up his own phone. He was a very polite man, and he took the time to answer every question I had. I had him on the phone for about 20 minutes when he said, are you sure you want to write screenplays? I said, yes, sir, I do. And he said, then get your audience to feel something. I never forgot that call. So I took Michael's advice and I gobbled up everything there was to know about screenwriting. I bought all the books, took all the courses, attended all the seminars. I was even fortunate to get writing tips from Graham Yost, the guy who wrote Speed. And I took character development advice from Shane Black, the writer-director of Iron Man 3. Then a friend found an ad in a newspaper. It was a production company looking for a reader. I took the job for little to nothing pay and read literally hundreds of screenplays. It was such a great experience. All these writers missing very easily corrected components. Then I entered a writing competition and was asked to send my material to Zide Productions for review. They read it and were very interested. Zide Productions, incidentally, was the brains behind the American Pie franchise. I'll be talking about that more in weeks to come. I know you've come here looking for something specific, something that is going to get your movie idea onto the big screen. Trust me, there's nothing more important than laying down this foundation. If you want to climb Mount Everest, you need a plan and a strong will to do it. I'm going to give you that map, I'm going to give you the tools, and the will has to be up to you. Listen, I've been down this road. I've spent thousands of dollars and years of my time so you don't have to. Today I'm going to get you started on a screenwriting career. So why is screenwriting right now so important? Because in today's economy, you're the biggest commodity. You, and only you. The knowledge you have, the stories you have, and your vision is what's going to make you a screenwriter. In the famous words of screenwriter William Goldman, nobody knows anything. Trust me, your audience is hungry for new, exciting, and visual entertainment. So let's give it to them. Joseph Campbell once said, I think what we're seeking is an experience of being alive. Incidentally, Joseph Campbell was George Lucas' story consultant on a little movie called Star Wars. Listen, everybody loves a good movie, which is why studios need product they can sell. So why not you? Why not now? You could turn that movie idea that you have into a blockbuster screenplay and it starts right here with my number one technique, creating a massive demand for your screenplay every time. So how are we going to do that? I was in LA recently to pitch an idea to a production company. And I noticed no matter how many times I sat down with a producer, the conversation always started with, what's your story about? I know this may sound extremely basic, but you'd be amazed at how many writers cannot summarize their movie idea in one sentence. That sentence is called a logline. This simple yet effective technique changed my screenwriting career forever. It took me from amateur to serious like that. A gripping logline is the difference between a script getting sold or a script getting tossed. Every logline must answer that one question. 
What is your story about? You cannot begin writing a screenplay until you alone know what your story is about. I've had students rewrite entire screenplay based on this one theory. Today I'm going to show you how to write a log line that will create a massive demand for your screenplay every time. Once you have a tight grip on what your story is about, you'll be able to move forward in the execution of a powerful, high concept screenplay. It'll give you the confidence you'll need to sit across from any producer or agent and when they ask you what's your story about, you can reply with conviction. It's a story about a man who meets a woman of his dreams only to find out she's from another planet and must protect her from an evil CIA agent who wants her dead. So how we create a log line? Let's take a look. Every log line must contain four key elements. Main character, an opponent, a situation, and a goal. The main character is your story and must be unforgettable to your audience. It's the one character they are going to laugh with, love with, and follow throughout your entire journey. Your opponent, is otherwise known as the bad guy, is the character set into play to keep the main character from getting what he or she wants. Keep that in mind. This character keeps them from getting what they want. Okay? The situation is something the main character gets themselves into and needs to get himself out of. And the goal is what the main character wants. The girl, the gold, the championship, or save the world. So let's break down the log line for three of the highest grossing movies of all time. We're going to start with Avatar. Remember, your movie needs a main character. In the movie Avatar, your main character we're going to save on time a little bit, was a paraplegic marine, good old Jake Sully. Keep in mind, your main character is the one that is going to take you through this journey. Now you need an opponent, somebody who's going to keep that main character from getting what they want. In the case of Avatar, it was the greedy mining company. And we need a situation. In most movies, a good situation is falls in love. Falls in love with the wrong person. It's been going on since West Side Story. So he falls in love with somebody He's not supposed to. And the goal, in the case with Avatar, is to defend against the company. So you've got Jake, you've got the greedy mining company, falling in love, which is never really good, and defending against the mining company, Avatar. Put it all together, and you've got a paraplegic marine, goes to a distant planet, falls in love with a local native alien, and must defend her people in their struggle against the ruthless mining company. Keep it short. It's just one sentence. That one sentence will become your movie. You have to see it. Let's move on to the next one. Titanic. If we break down the characters and the elements that we need, you have your main character, opponent, situation, and goal. We're going to need a main character. In Titanic, we have a poor artist, good old Jack Dawson. And we're going to need an opponent. In this case, it was the abusive fiancé, Cal Hockley. And the unfortunate situation, in this case, the good old Titanic itself was pretty bad of a situation. And lastly, we need a goal. And the goal was to protect from the fiancé, protect Rose from her fiancé. So if we put it all together, I would suggest using a pen or paper and write this down so that you can actually look back on it later for study purposes. When a poor artist wins a trip on a maiden voyage on the ill-fated Titanic, he falls in love with a rich aristocrat and must protect her against an abusive fiancé. Are you seeing a pattern? You've got a main character, you've got an opponent, you've got the situation, and you've got a goal. They have to all be together for the most effectiveness to create a, an awesome logline. Okay? Now for one of my all-time favorite superhero movies, The Avengers. Who's your main character in The Avengers? In the Avengers, you have the hopeless Avengers. You have the Hulk, Captain America, Thor, or my favorite, Iron Man. Now you need an opponent. In this case, for Avengers, you had Thor's adopted brother, Loki, the evil brother. And what was the situation? The situation was is that Loki wanted to take over the world. That's a pretty big deal. And lastly, what were the Avengers going to do? They were going to protect Earth. So let's put it all together and see what it looks like. A team of superheroes known as the Avengers must band together to stop a villainous rival and his evil army from taking over the Earth. Now, as a writer, it's up to you to prepper it with words needed to make your logline compelling. You want to get an agent or producer to sit up and take notice. Remember, this is your movie idea. It starts right here. A main character, an opponent, a situation, and a goal. You cannot build a house without laying down your foundation. A logline is your foundation. 
your screenplay will collapse unless you build it on solid ground. Take the time, break down other movies, see the pattern, and develop your logline. I hope this first video was a great start in understanding how to turn that movie idea into a screenplay. Logline, logline, logline. Learn it, live it, love it. You've got three more sessions to go. In the next video, we'll be talking about the seven powerful techniques that are used by the most successful screenwriters in Hollywood. Go ahead, post some stuff below, ask me any question, and I'll respond personally. Get ready to jumpstart that logline and turn it into a powerful, money-generating blockbuster screenplay. Until the next video, write the movie you want to see. Thanks for being here.